Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. So I'm your host, John Harris, and today on the Rock and Roll Podcast, we have Pathways, of which there are many. Actually, there's only one, One Pathways, and they have a new single out right now called Great Old Ones, which we may refer to as Goo throughout the interview. And they also have an album in the works, which makes me super excited because not only have I heard Goo, but I've also heard the next one, Private Listening Session, uh, and it's exciting stuff. It's good stuff. I dig what you guys are doing. So we've got Kyle, we've got John Air. So please, boys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, shoot, John. Be here. Yeah, fantastic. Now, great old ones, Goo. Take us through this. And you know, you're the only band that's ever sent me a manifesto. Usually, I get like a poorly written bio, but this time around, I got an incredibly inspiring manifesto. So. Take us through, I guess, pathways. What's changed? What's happened? Where are you going? And then let's jump into how that creates goo, great old ones. Yeah, so um, actually, John Air and I are the newest members. I came on back in August. They auditioned me and sent me a crazy bass solo. Then I had to learn it, sent them a little video. And then we went and had party, or went and party down in Tacoma and ate pizza and stuff and kind of talk things over and they welcome me in and then john air when did you come in i forget i came into the band about a about a little over a year and a half ago at this point um it's been a slow process as you mentioned we were working on our full-length album in that time and uh shortly after that we found kyle and here we are yeah and actually um so our drummer will and then our guitarist john um they moved up from florida so they were down there in one corner of the united states and then came up to the very opposite corner <laughs> up in up here in Washington like um so so those three are down in Tacoma which is like just south of Seattle I'm up in Seattle we'll meet up every now and then and and so uh so great old ones we all wrote together and stuff I think we got that sucker written in like gosh what was it three or four weeks or something like that and then already had it yeah already had it shipped out to our buddy in Russia and stuff that does all of our mixing and engineering and stuff um so, yeah, writing that for the first time, well, writing with these guys for the first time was pretty crazy. It was a great time, but just super fast, super productive. And, like, we'll write remotely and stuff on this thing called Guitar Pro, where you can, like, select all your notes and, like, sheet music. And then we just kind of send each other notes and stuff back and forth. I've never done that before, but it was it was wild. And it's I'm used to usually just, like, coming up with a riff and trying remembering. But that is, like, obsolete. Yeah. Those are the days old, you know, yeah. but like doing this stuff now is, man, you can get like hyper selective with everything. And, oh man, it's, it, it was a great process and I just been learning a ton, but, uh, yeah. So we got this single that just came out and then we have another one that's coming up soon. Sophomania. Sophomania. I didn't even look up that word to see what it means. I know. I understand mania, manic, some kind of, uh, neurosis, psychosis thing going on and sopho. Yeah. So it actually means uh, somebody – well, a sophomaniac is somebody who believes that they know more than everybody else. So sophomania would be, I guess, that condition, believing that you know more than everyone. Oh. So, so a know-it-all. <laughs> Fancy word for a know-it-all. Okay. Fancy word for a know-it-all. So, <laughs> so when you're a sophomore you know, in high school or university <laughs> or whatever, you're a know-it-all? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> must be how it works <laughs> you think you've been around long enough to know it all but yeah. there's still people above you yeah mm-hmm. and they're junior when they're above you before they get right. to senior yeah that's funny you mentioned you know the guitar pro thing and um, i think that's actually the first time it's come up on the show of, of actually using that as a tool instead of just trying to remember things like it's not 2005 anymore kyle you can you can <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know, right? Like yeah. using technology. When computers, they make these little boxes you can type on and see other people on now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're pretty uh, rad. But yeah, we wrote that and like there's a ripping guitar solo on it, of course, because you got to have those. That's standard. Mm-hmm. But then there's a really cool bass solo on there. So I was pretty happy about that. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of fun. Now, <clears throat> that brings me to actually a really interesting question because. Bass kind of sits in two different areas. Either it's just a foundation of the song, and you're just going to chug along or whatever, or it's like a mid-forward thing, like a power trio, like Rush or Yes or something. Yes. So when you got the six string, 
How do you balance between those two where you are a foundation and then where you bust out a solo? Like what kind of, how do you, how do you do that? Well, it's, uh, uh, so far what I, what I really like about it is that, uh, I get to push the rhythm guitars out of the way though. Uh-huh. That's like, and as a, as a bass player, that's your number one enemy. But, um, what I really, really liked about great old ones is that, uh, just, I honestly think like the verses are probably my favorite where it's just like this creepy crawly kind of R and B bass line and stuff kind of going on. And you can really hear like the drums and bass just work in the verses and stuff. Every single kick drum is just stomping on the bass like a cockroach. And, um, um, I don't know. It kind of it felt like in this song, comparatively to the, um, um, I guess the what, what's already out and stuff, is that it's it's a little a little groovier, which gave me a chance to kind of like actually put in my own flair and stuff into it. I'm I actually played for a, a funk band, electronic funk band and stuff in Seattle for the last like seven or eight years, and so to kind of bring those elements and stuff into progressive metalcore was so much fun so like basically john kind of writes the framework and then we get to add in our own parts and i got to do that so it was cool about the solo is like you know they're just like oh yeah go ahead and like write a solo so you can come up with you know here's your chance to flex and chance to shine mm-hmm. so like you know i got a little bass so i was pretty happy with it but i was like yeah but it's not it's just it's just missing that you know that big wow you know mm-hmm. and so john's like let me take a look at it so he threw in his own like little guitarist things in there. And what really makes that cool is that it sounds like a bass player that wants to be a guitarist, you know, like right. trying to play like a guitarist, trying to keep up just like the classic, like battle, like a bass player always living in the guitarist shadow and stuff. So, <laughs> so, but it, it made that solo so much cooler to have like, um, you know, the, both of those elements from both sides kind of come together and it just made for a really kick-ass solo. I'm, Definitely my, probably my proud, no, it is my, uh, a solo I'm most proud of, honestly. Probably song I'm most proud of right now. Mm-hmm. You would make the great old ones proud, Kyle. Thank you. It's Thank you very great, much. The great old ones comes from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys mentioned three to four weeks to write the track. First track that you guys wrote together. Um, what was the intention in this track did you guys set out an intention like hey we're gonna sit down and we're gonna write a song that does blop or is about you know blop or how did what what happened in that three to four weeks so this song is actually a standalone single um we are promoting an upcoming album but this song will not be on it and this song was actually the last one that was written so the album is actually done i'm sure we'll touch on that in a little bit but uh so this is a separate standalone song, and when we wrote it, um, it's actually the first one that we've written together as a group. The album was uh, our guitarists and um, drummers foundation. They had all the parts, and uh, there were actually vocals already on it, but um, we went back and uh, removed the old vocals. We got um, an eraser, erased it, and then... Yeah, we, uh, we erased it. But uh, wiped, wiped away. Uh, oh shit! I got it on the drums. Crap. Yeah. yeah. Number two pencil. You yeah, know, exactly. just squiggle her out. Yeah. Just scrub it out. Um. Forgive me. I really was unprepared for this. <laughs> uh, you showed up with the right microphone though, you, and the right headphones. No, no joke. Same headphones, baby. Yeah. Right. It's on. not how you go. It's how you show. So you got that right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Um. Silly question. Yeah, Might you be able well, to turn the preamp up a little bit on the SM7B there? Without without clipping, yeah, I can absolutely. Is that a little better? It is. Good. Get that up a little bit more. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm I, sorry, I'm blanking on the question right now, Kyle. Do you think maybe you could pick up? Yeah, yeah, I can expand on that. So, like, it, it sure felt that like this song was kind of more to, um, you know, because everything else, like especially the album, is much heavier. You know, mm-hmm. kind of closer to our classic or our our roots from like the previous releases we've had. And so this one was kind of more like we were looking for it to be what more broadly acceptable and stuff to like people that don't necessarily listen to that style of music or anything really, really hardcore. Like, for example, my sister, you know, she's not really into like the super like genty heavy stuff. But Mm -hmm. then she like heard this and like she was able to listen to it and love it. And then there's also old fans that really like the heavier stuff that like this, too. So it's kind of like 
trying to appeal to everyone, you know, kind of make it easily accessible to everybody. And on top of that, like, just let's just make something like kind of catchy, a little poppier, you know, like what's some elements and like pop music that we like. Like I mentioned R&B, that kind of R&B bass line and stuff in the in the verses. Mm -hmm. Like, I think um, I think that's kind of what we were going for is just like easily accessible as like it just like, hey, here's this single. Check it out. Stay tuned because we got more. So as a way to like welcome on some uh some other fans, you know, some new break people. Break the ice. Yeah, yeah, break the ice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that that's what our intention was with this one, but um the next ones are definitely a lot heavier. Okay. Do you think that that's going to throw people off like you brought them in with great old ones, you're splashing in some of that funky goodness. Um and then they're going to get hit in the, hit in the face uh with the other stuff. Do you think that's going to throw them off? Hopefully not. And I think Pathways has a solid enough uh, fan base that existed before even Kyle and I came in that they'll appreciate the heavy. And uh, anybody who does get put off by the heaviness, I'm sure it'll be offset by those older fans. Okay, cool. Now, something you mentioned a couple of times uh, is the R&B bass line. What is that? What does that mean? For those out there who don't know and how it was able to fit so well into the track, how you just, just snuck that little guy in there. <laughs> yeah basically just think of like hip-hop like honestly l- lately i've been listening to um snoop dogg's first album mm-hmm. like the bass on that especially keyboard bass in hip-hop songs are smacking i mean and like heavy too yeah. like yeah. even like in modern hip-hop and stuff now what is it Ex- extens- extension i forget that guy he passed away oh there's a, there's a couple um big oh, rappers like and stuff yeah, yeah like, like i don't really know too much of big rap but like older older stuff like nwa biggie snoop dogg like those are the ones that really come into mind and they have like just these smacking bass lines and stuff mm-hmm. and um you know where it's just like supposed to kind of bump and um I don't know. That's kind of what I was going for with that. And that's, that's what I meant by like R and B type of baseline. Yeah. So not like R and B, like, you know, Love no you one wide on. enough, you know, <laughs> yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we're to, trying to go a little harder, you know, time to make love to you. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grover Washington stuff. Boom. Uh, very cool stuff. Well, yeah, well that makes sense. So all the early hip hop stuff was basically R and B records that they were resampling. Yeah, borderline metal. I mean, you know, all you need is just like rhythm guitars on there, and then like maybe have someone screaming the lyrics, and then it would. Oh my gosh! Oh man, I wonder. I was gonna make a new metal joke, but I kind of lost it. Oh, that's right, new metal. That's okay. I forgot <laughs> that stuff. Yeah, there was a time for that. Limp Biscuit. Yeah. yeah. I say, man, I wonder if we got this. I wonder if we got like a whiny screamer on there, and like a dude with a really good rap voice, and a few electronic sounds, and then put some guitars and. They could be from Lincoln Park or something. And anyway, um, <laughs> new metal. Sweet. Okay. Tell us about this album that you said it's already written. It's already recorded. We've already chatted a little bit about what to expect from it, but that's kind of my big question. What should we expect from this album? Yeah. So I would say a good blend of what we heard in great old ones and, Probably some of the older material. I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of the older songs, such as Misere. Um, have you heard the uh, older discography? I, it's okay if you haven't. I'm just wondering. No, I have. I did it in, pre- in preparation for this interview. Now, part of the reason I didn't focus on it so much was because when I was reading the manifesto, it was kind of like I got the idea that there was a bit of breaking away from that. And maybe I misread the the breaking away, but it seemed like we're we're closing mm-hmm. off this part of our history to a point we're moving to a completely different culture could be a different mm-hmm. country <laughs> just about <laughs> yugoslavia <laughs> State, yeah so, yugoslavia almost. and um going from what was it florida to to washington i mean worlds apart right um drastic yeah and uh you know kind of turning a new page and uh, saying goodbye to the old label. I don't know if you guys are looking for a new yeah. label or not, or if you're just planning on you know, keeping it self-released. But uh, that's part of the reason why I was like, cool, let's focus on where you guys are headed. But you know, this is great. We can chat about um, you know, the previous stuff as well. Yeah, well, it's just more of a foundation. Uh, it's, we're looking for, well, the album is going to be a good blend of that older stuff and what we heard in Goo. Uh, we're really going for more melody, um, 
you know, more singing, definitely more singing as opposed to the older stuff, which was probably 90% screamed vocals to the 10% clean vocals. And we have a much uh, better balance this time around. Probably more singing, in fact. Okay. Yeah, that. And then also, um, I mean, what really, really stuck out to me in, in the album. So the album was done before I came on. Mm-hmm. But um, it was kind of cool coming into it as an outsider, though. And um, uh, what, what you could hear is just how much more classically um, inspired it is as compared to the old ones. The old ones, they're kind of in there. But in this one, I, what was super cool is um, they uh, we have a, um, a whole intro. Um, it's all just like basically like symph- a symphonic poem. Mm-hmm. And uh, that even might be the title. Um, but basically, so there's the symphonic poem. And I mean, it's all straight up just orchestra stuff, you know, not necessarily heavy metal. But... Uh, there's elements from that riffs and stuff taken from that symphonic poem and you'll find them in other songs. So Sophomania has some riffs that were taken like, so started off, it could be like a violin riff. And now on Sophomania, it's like heavy on guitar with like distortion. And then it's just like blown up, you know? So it's like all these songs are kind of like revolving around this, like, kind of more classical piece that it's taken from and that's how they all come together and that's almost kind of the same as the definition of the band name pathways four mm-hmm. pathways band members leading together to one spot to come together mm-hmm. pathways yeah, yeah. that's kind yeah. of corny but you know hey, yeah but, but classically inspired if i came from florida to have a slice of pizza with you in tacoma i would probably hire you too yeah <laughs> well, thank you yeah <laughs> what kind of pizza was it do you remember? Classic pepperoni. Classic Is it pepperoni? pepperoni? It was. It was not no Domino stuff. They do know how to treat a broad. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was it? Oh, and we had a bucket of margarita mix where yes. you just like yep. add the tequila in. Mm-hmm. It was pretty wild. It was all red and stuff, so it kind of looked like you're, you know, yeah. drinking blood. Exactly. And then we shot some white claws and stuff too. Like took a knife and, you know, doing one of those deals. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a good time. That was good. I forget the label of the pizza. My, I know it wasn't DiGiorno either. It wasn't delivery, though. That's right. I, I forgot, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. was, Perfect. Know, now, under this, the influence. Under the influence. This music video for Goo. Take us through this. This is quite the production. Where did, where did this happen? How did it go down? So Hot Carl Productions in... Uh, Portland. I think they're based out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, that's where we shot the music video. That's where that mansion is. And uh, he hooked us up, man. Hot Carl, or I guess Carl. I keep calling him Hot Carl. Hey, he's uh, Carl. Carl. He's hot. Yeah. He hot Carl. Uh, he's just the man. Like he knows everybody that you need to know for this kind of thing. He hooked us up with the mansion. He hooked us up with the actors, uh, the crew that filmed us. And um, yeah, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it was wild. It's like a big wedding venue and stuff, and it was owned yeah. by some – I forgot what the millionaire did, but just some rich dude. And like as we were pulling up to the gates and like coming in, then there was like a whole army of landscapers and stuff just like rolling out in like three huge Ford vans and stuff coming out the front just to give you an idea how big the place is. But it's it's an expensive place just to upkeep. But, but it was rad. You could get lost there. It was nuts. Well, it's a good thing you guys didn't get lost. You would have missed this interview. Yeah, yes. right. I got it. Shoot. Mm-hmm. Still, still would have been there. But yeah, it was... Um, Eating free yeah, food. I'd never been... I actually had free Subway there. I do remember that. I can't forget that. Yeah. And Hot Carl Productions, they even provided lunch, too. They He packed us sandwiches. I mean, really. Wow. Literally <laughs> made sandwiches and put them in little bags and then brought Reese's and stuff like that. And he's like, hey, I brought some snacks in case you're hungry. So, you know, if you guys want a bite to eat and maybe a music video. Yeah. <laughs> bang bang boom i'm gonna put that down in the old notes <laughs> get your go down to portland and get yourself a hot carl makes it, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah makes a mean ham sandwich he makes, makes a mean ham sandwich and uh I hope he hears this interview yeah, yeah. kosher upon request Ding. <laughs> now i'm actually really curious because this uh i know we keep talking about the bass but i mean the bass player showed up for an interview that's that's a first um <laughs> is that a ding wall that you're playing 
Ah, my man. Yes, it is. It's oh. a Dingwall NG3, the Nolly Get Good series that all the periphery fanboys are, uh, you know, all crazy about right now. But, uh, yeah, funny story about that thing. I waited four years for that sucker. I have, as soon as I heard about Dingwall, fell in love with him immediately. And it's one of those things like, you know, like if I find something that I get obsessed on, then I have to know everything about it. So I'm like studying the company and like, they only had that like five string signature that came out yeah. for Nolly. And then I was like, okay, when they coming out with a six string, let's go. And so the next year they came out with a four string son of a bitch. Okay. Yeah. Wait another year. And then they started talking about a six string. And then the third year they finally announced it at like Nam. And then um, as soon as it became available for order, then I went, placed my order, got it, dropped the money, just threw it at them, take it, I don't care. And then it took – it was, it was, I think, just under a year. I got it two years ago in October, and um, I've been loving that thing ever since. But it was a long, terrible wait. It's like when you know something's coming in the U- in the mail from UPS and you can't wait for it. Mm-hmm. But like it's that torture, but like times 360 days. So it was painful, but it finally got here, and I haven't put it down since. Love that thing. I know. So, served served really well on that song, and I mean, like it cuts through guitars so well, like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like playing with a nail nails. You know, you just. Oh yeah. What is it about the company that inspired you and you got the bass, obviously you fell in love with it. What is it about it, though, that it's just because of the way it cuts through? Yeah, just the way it sounds in a mix. Like that alone, like as soon as I heard that, and it was just like a, a premiere guitar interview with Nolly where he's like on stage going through his setup and all that stuff, and that's where I learned about everything. The Dark Glass B7K, I got one of those things too. Yep. It's That's like the essential gent metal kit right now is you got to have your dark glass and then a ding wall yep. so it was just from some from seeing that interview and then him going through all of his tone and then actually hearing his tone coming through the pa i mean it just sounded so gnarly like i mean really like nothing you ever heard like i'm sure like you know about warwick you know about specter mm-hmm. fender all those all those companies have their own signature sound you know yep. and they all sound great they all sound nothing like the Dingwall, and just the way it sits and the way it blends with the rhythm guitars is just so powerful. But um, so that's just the guitar. But then the company alone. So honestly, like when it comes to bass, there's hardly any innovation. And this company, because of them starting with um, or making the uh, the multi scale fan fret stuff super popular sorry i gotta do it i'm gonna geek out on you guys so hardcore but um so this lower string it's uh across 37 inch scale so you get like even more tension on it so it sounds better you get more harmonics and like just overall clarity instead of that low crummy floppy bass that you can't even hear in a mix only like low sub and then the highest string which is a c is like cross like 32 inch scale or something like that so it's kind of like better timbre for each string but yeah they're the only company that's like really innovating in bass whereas like guitar gets all of the attention gets everything gets all the bells and whistles but this was the only company that's actually like pushing forward innovation on bass and because of them like the competition then you see all these other companies ibanez just came out with a multi-scale bass um there's a couple other ones now multi-scale is just like everywhere just because of these guys doing it and they saw how popular it is so everyone else like the big companies are hopping on the bandwagon and dingwall was the one that was the one to kick it off for him and god i hope to shake the sheldon dingwall's hand someday because oh my god i I just love their i love their company and they're actually out of canada too i think they're around you yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so um yeah, sorry, that's my rant, but I absolutely love that company and love these bases. They are amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you you know the the old standby was what a Fender P bass going into a Sans amp? Like we could call that the mm-hmm. whole the whole 90s right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's the that's alternative music right there in a nutshell. But yeah. actually P bases have their place. Now I'm starting to love those things too. So, I'm mm-hmm. coming on to those. Mm-hmm. That'll be the next one. That's mm-hmm. the next girl. Beautiful. That'll be your Sophomania. Mm. yeah yeah i was trying i was trying cool the know-it-all bass the know-it-all bass so we chatted about guitar pro which was cool we got that onto the show um 
amazingly powerful tool, especially for writing, seeing things. Um, anything that you write in there, you can eject as MIDI. You can bring that into your session. You can play around. You don't have to worry about writing the MIDI. You've already got it written. Um, R&B bass lines. I'm digging it. Uh, speaking of R&B, Hot Carl Productions. I don't know why those two together fit together in a sandwich, but they fit together to me in a sandwich. <laughs> Dingwall basses, Dark Glass. I... I uh, have not had the pleasure of experiencing a real dark glass, but I have the neural DSP version of it, which is, you know, you could run anything through that, and it sounds like a chorus of angels on the road to hell. It's beautiful. <laughs> yep. Uh, we chatted about Goo, great old ones. We chatted about Sophomania. We chatted about the album that's coming up. We chatted about you guys writing the song. Um, I think we hit everything. Was there anything that we missed, boys? I don't think so. We chatted yeah. about the history of the band a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I think we hit all the major talking points. I think so. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I, I guess last thing really is just we're going to be super active from now on until we release this uh, this album. Um, probably probably yeah. in the fall is when we're going to release it. But I mean, we've got stuff planned just about well from here on out. Other releases and stuff will be coming. So really, like stay tuned but like we mostly just want to say like hey we're back in action and we're not leaving and you know Mm -hmm. stay tuned because we got some cool shit yeah like get involved with us you know talk to us say hey stop by our pages honestly help us out so we can keep doing it that's right baby so So if you guys can't wait to do live shows that's right sorry Oh, no, it's okay. If you go to today's show notes or if you're listening in wherever you're listening in, Spotify, Apple Music, watching on YouTube, in the show notes, there should be a link to uh, Pathways. I have pathwaysband.bandcamp.com. Is that the best place for people to uh, make sure they get all of your various links to different socials and hear your stuff and all that? So we actually have a hyped it link, which is the one that contains all of our links. I'm not sure if we're using the Bandcamp for much else other than merch. Is that correct, Kyle? Yeah, Bandcamp probably isn't the best, but our our Facebook, we're on Facebook, Instagram, all those normal ones. Um, mm-hmm. um, John, I can grab that uh, hyped it for you. No, I typed in Pathways Facebook and I got a dentistry page. You guys don't pull teeth too, do you? Not yeah, root know canals, um, you know, canker sores, um, all that stuff we do. Let's get mm-hmm. implants, yeah, dentures, on your- stop on by. I got you. My Dad. dad's actually a dentist, so. Oh, that's ah. that's fantastic! And then he found out that you wanted to be in a funk band, and well, da, 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 da. I'm just spreading the uh, word of uh, dental hygiene through <laughs> my music. Here it is, so, pathways floss every day. Floss. You don't have to floss your teeth; just the ones you want to keep. Yeah, exactly. see, you only need those front two. That's all anyone's going to see. Exactly. Okay, so I have a facebook.com slash pathways band. If that is the best place for people to. Uh, link up with yeah. you and then i guess my only other question is uh are you guys looking to chat with labels at all or are you looking to self-release this one i think down the road we're interested in it um are, are you talking about the album or are you talking about the singles well the singles are already okay. at least one of them if not two of them are going to be already oh. released but um i guess just in general your plan because I yeah. obviously, I know some labels and I see that you're not on one, so I was just going to ask: Did you want me to send yeah. an introductory email? You know, because I like your stuff, I like you guys, I like anybody who oh. plays, you know, bass with a ham Thank sandwich. You. So, got to do it. Yeah, got to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, honestly, that would be so cool. I mean, we we are looking for some ra- label representation. Okay. Um, you know, uh, we're just hoping to get that conversation started. You know, but uh, we've got everything set up, so you know, it'll come in time, but we are uh, looking for it. Yes. Okay, cool. There's one in particular that I'm thinking of that I think would be a good fit. Obviously have that conversation, find out. Um, And in the meantime, though, boys, I believe that this pathway was successful. So thank you so much for coming on to the rock metal podcast. (laughs) Thank you for having us. Thank you, man, John, that was fun. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for, Thanks for geeking out with us for a second. And you asked about my bass. That's no one ever asked about the bass, man. You made Thank Kyle you. So happy today. You made my day. <laughs> you really did. <laughs> Honestly, usually like, oh, nice guitar. Oh, it's got some strings. Oh, it's fast. Ooh. So thank you. You're welcome. very much, man. Honestly.